there! Welcome to the next 3D tutorial. I will be doing a 3D square for you today. Um, we are going to be doing some things a little bit differently. We are not making six separate square pieces. Um, I'm going to make four of the squares to where they are one single uh, connection. So, the other two will have to be separate. Okay, you want to take your yarn, make your slip knot, and this is a really good way to make um, uh, uh, yarn baby blocks and um, dice. If you're into dice, you can make your own dice to hang in your car or whatever you want. So, let's get started here. Chain 10. 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Chain your extra for 11. Skip that new chain. Start in your 10th. And we're going to be doing single crochets all the way down. And this will be our first row. The chain never counts as a row. It only counts as a foundation. <clears throat> okay. And once you're done with this, you'll want to do this for ten rows to make that square. Okay, so kind of straighten it out. You want to chain one, turn, because this isn't like the triangles where you didn't have to chain one. You definitely need to chain one, or you'll be decreasing. Okay, go into that, that first stitch there. Don't skip it like we did in the triangle. Go straight into that stitch and just start single crocheting again. And you will always have 10 stitches on each row. If you don't, you've messed up somewhere. Okay, there are two rows. So now, chain one and turn, and just keep single crocheting for eight more rows. Eight stitches, eight rows. It should be even. So, uh, I will meet you back here when you are done with all ten of your rows. So you will be doing eight more rows. Okay. There's my square. So what we want to do now is go into the back loops only. And the way that you can tell whether it's the back loop or the front loop is you see the V shapes here. This is a back loop. Like that. This is the back loop of the stitch. And this one is the front loop of the stitch. So, back loop, front loop. Now, since we are turning this, Since you have turned your work, these are going to count as front loops now. It depends on the way you hold it. So we are going to be going into the front loops right here. So since we are going into these loops, not, not these, but only these, this will allow us to 
kind of do this with it. We're going to be making the squares together, but they need to be able to fold. And we can't necessarily fold these like this. So, we're going to use the back loops. So now go into this first stitch here, back loop only, and single crochet. So it will look like this. That back loop is going to form a line all the way across your work. So go into the next stitch, back loop only, single crochet. Next stitch, back loop only, single crochet. Back loop only, single crochet. And you want to keep doing this in just the back loops. This will count as your first row on the next square. Okay, now if you can see how different this is, turn it over and you'll see a line. Now, kind of fold it this way. Can you feel how easily it will fold on that line? So now, keep your work turned and just, hey, I have finished that. So, what you want to do now is count that as your first row. So you'll be doing nine more so that it will be even with the rest of the square. So just go into the next stitch, front and back loops included, and just start single crocheting all the way across. Okay, that was the second row of using both loops. So chain one and turn and just keep working exactly like you were on the first square. Since you have two rows, you are now working on the third row. So make sure that you just have ten rows at the end of this square. And I will see you back here when you are done with that. Okay, I've finished my next square. <clears throat> so, uh, what we want to do now, since it's folding this way, we are going to chain one and turn, and we need to keep it folding this way to make that square. So, since we want it to be folding this way, now, if I counted my rows correctly, then we'll be going in the front loops only this time. So go into the front loops, just like this, and do single crochets. Just the front loops. I'm pretty positive that I counted my rows correctly, but if I did not, I apologize. But um, however many rows that you have, just make sure that it, it is like folding in the same spot. So this will be going this way now. See, we've got our line on the back. So chain your one and turn it over. And now it will be folding this way again. And that was your first row. So, when you chain one and turn, go into the next stitch, pull up both of those loops, not just the front, not just the back, go into both of them as you would usually do. And just do single crochets 
all through there for 10 more rows. So this will be your second row. So this is your second row, chain one and turn. Now you are on the third row and you will continue to do this for eight more rows until you reach row ten. Okay, I have finished my tenth row on the third square. So this is what it looks like now, just like this. <clears throat> So what we want to do now, since I have chained one and turned already, now we are going into the back loops, just the back loops so that we can make that final fold over because this square still needs a top to it. So go into the back loop, make a single crochet, and again this is the back loop right here in the back. This one is the front loop. So you want to go into this, the middle of this loop and just put it through the back loop. And I apologize if you hear any tapping. Um, I've noticed some tapping noises in some of my videos. It's because my camera stand is right here in front of me. And the stand is small enough to where I can see over it, but the end of my crochet hook taps on it just like that when I crochet. And I do apologize. I try to keep it from doing that. Okay. The last two... Oops, sorry, I went to the front loop. Back loops only. So now we're at the last two. Single crochet. Back loop, single crochet. And that will always count as your first row. So chain one and turn. I know it's getting a little long to work with here. But you can think of it as like a, a miniature scarf. So now go into the next stitch, this first stitch here, front loop and back loop together. We are now working in both loops again as normal. So we are going to single crochet in each of them. Chain one, turn over, and now single crochet for eight more rows until you have ten. That's your first two, and I will meet you back here when you have the other eight. Okay, I've just finished the tenth row, and this is what it looks like now. We have a fold here, a fold here, and a fold here. Okay, so now I'm going to teach you how to put it together without having to sew it right now. Just put these pieces together, just like this, just fold it right in half. And if you put the ends together like this, go through this next stitch as if you're going to make another row, but also go through the other stitch of your first row in the very beginning. Right like this. And now we're going to slip stitch all the way across. So go through both of your loops for a slip stitch. And again, go through both of these stitches, yarn over, pull through both of the stitches, and pull through the loop on your hook without yarning over again. We're not single crocheting. So 
so go through again pull through both of those pull through your loop with just one yarn over just like this pull through all three of those that it's even and the last stitches are going to be a little hard Put it right there just like that and you can do another one if you if you wish uh, just for extra security okay and that's all there is to that. Now you have your own little square. So now we have to make the other uh, parts to it. So you're going to chain one and end your yarn here. You can make a long tail for the sewing if you want. Be generous with that. There will be a lot of sewing uh, once we get the other two pieces. Okay, so just pull that tight. Okay. So now we're going to set this aside. And now we are going to just make one more square. Well, two more squares, but they're going to be just one separate square. So make your chain of 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So now chain 1, go into the next chain and single crochet across. This will count as your first row as usual. And I will meet you back here when you get both of your squares completed. Okay, there is my last square. Hmm, I don't know if we'll need to sew with this. Uh, go ahead and leave a long tail on at least one of your squares, just in case. Trim the tail. Okay, so there's our next long tail. So put the one with the long tail aside. We're going to be using this one first. So take out your needle. I know that it's getting a little dark. It's about 2 o'clock in December, so the sun is starting to try to set behind the tree over there. It's next to my window. Okay, so on your biggest square, the one that we've made kind of 3D so far, you want to try to sew this on. So, start with the first side. Kind of match up the, uh, the stitches here. So you want to put it corner to corner. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that well. So just hem this all the way across. And hopefully that you left yourself enough yarn to uh, be able to do all four sides of this. Remember to try to hide your little tails inside of your work because nobody's ever going to see the inside of this. Uh, 
yarn came off my needle. Just a second. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, we are coming up on the next side, so when you're done with that, and you know it's going to stay, turn it over and try to line up the next side, corner to corner, just like this. This side's already hemmed. Go to the next, and we're going to hem up these sides. If your corners kind of don't add up, like mine kind of didn't add up right, or line up right, rather, just kind of take um, the corner there, tuck it in just a little bit, and sew it down uh, to where it's like kind of folding itself in there. Um, because you want this to stay as straight as you can possibly get it. Okay, so here's our next inside so just do what you did with the others and your yarn will kind of curl up so just let go of it and pull your work and hold it up in the air and it'll twirl around like this this will get your yarn to uh, stop kind of curling after a while and do that every now and then, just so that you won't have a knot in uh, what you're sewing with. Because you definitely don't want to get a knot in your string in the middle of sewing. Okay, tuck in that tail. Alright, so now you should just have this one area left, and it should already be kind of lined up for you, See, right there like that, so just pinch it together, and him. Okay. Perfect. All right. So now we need to do this side. And once you only have about half of one of these little pockets left, 
we'll be stuffing it. So, since it's hard to hide this tail right now, since there's no stuffing on the inside, just leave it right now. You can remove your yarn for now. <coughs> okay, so here's the next one. And try to put it on like you did this one. If this one's if the lines are going up and down on this side like this, then you want the lines to go up and down on this side. So line it up kind of like you did on the other side. Okay, for the first part here, turn it the way that you'd like to sew it first. Pinch these together. Get them as as lined up as you possibly can. And I would like to do this side first, since I'm going around uh, counterclockwise. Okay. Here's my first one. Kind of look for the uh, thing there. Stretch it a little bit if you have to. Okay, so the first corner. Perfect. Now that it's attached, just hem this all the way across. Now, you'll be doing the same thing with this side as you did with the last side. So, I'm going to meet you back here. Once you have all of your hem sides done, just remember to stop on your last side about halfway so that you can start stuffing this cube. Okay, and there is one side already. So I will meet you guys back here once you have all your sides. Okay, I've gotten to my last area here. Uh, I know that this doesn't look very good right now. It's probably all scrunched up on your side too. So uh, let's start uh, stuffing this thing. Okay, if you need uh, again, like I say in my other videos, if you really need to, you can use the aid of a stuffing stick if you have one, or the eraser end of a pencil. Okay, let me get some more stuffing. Make sure that you kind of get around in the sides and the corners because there's a lot of creases in this project specifically. Uh, let me see if I can get it to go in that side. There we go. Okay. Got some more in this side. Now, you don't have to overstuff this because you kind of want the sides to be flat, kind of like a dice. I mean, a, a die, rather. Okay, and now you can finish sewing. Just kind of squish it around both sides, all sides, all directions. Try to get that stuffing to be kind of cubical. Okay. Now just finish your hemming.
Okay. <clears throat> now, just remember to hide your tails. So I'm going to hide my first one through here. Go through the same hole, go in a different direction. One more time should do it. You just want to do this a couple of times just to keep it secure. Uh, make sure that the tail is long enough but still well hidden. So now you can do your last tail, which, <laughs> which is still pretty long for me. <clears throat> so I'm going to do this about four times because of the the length. Put it through here. Go out this way. Go through here. And out this way. And now... One more time. Okay, so now cut and you have a cube. Now, if you really want to get artistic with this so that you don't have to waste your yarn, um, you can get black yarn and your darning needle and put a uh, little uh, black dots or something like that, or you could sew on little tiny black buttons uh, to make a dice. So there would be one in the middle here, uh, one and then two, and then a one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can make a dice, pretty or a die, pretty easily with this. Uh, if you want to make a pair of dice, that'd be nice too. Uh, it's really good for practice. Uh, you definitely won't be disappointed with your work once you're done with it, or at least I hope you're not. <laughs> okay, so that's it. Uh, leave a like, a comment, share, and happy crocheting. Bye.